We're in a flat in East London and I'm being directed um, to, to inhabit Stephen's experience and his efforts really to get out of the flat and to do something very simple, which is just go down to the shop and buy some tobacco for himself and pick up his benefits check. And the, uh, the hardship that, that that entails for him and the difficulty and the struggle that, that, that he entails. Often after we've, we've, we've finished filming, after these experiences, sometimes I remember the last one, my, my bus ride home, I was just looking out the window and just felt very uh, appreciative that I can make decisions about how I'm feeling and um, what I'm looking at and, and the meaning I interpret on things or the meaning I give to things. And, um, and, and not taking um, my, that, that reality for granted. And also understanding that as a model of reality. That, that, that's, that's the big thing I think I've, I've really understood, that my reality is a model. And there is a story that I've created to make sense of that and how vulnerable actually that is. Mm. And then if, if, my, if anything affects my feelings or if I'm on alert or if I'm stressed, that story changes to fit. Did you feel especially appreciative after this shoot? Do you think, do you feel, or is it appreciation of your reality and that you're on top of your reality? Something that you generally felt in each of the films so far? This film, um, especially, the sense that I can actually, um, I can't really actually relate. I can't actually talk to anyone. And just having a conversation on the street, what, what, what a threat, what, what a, what a, um, that's a kind of life and death situation. Uh, understanding that was, and the isolation that, that, that comes from there, that, that's been a big thing. Isolation is the right word. I feel ex even sitting here in the flat, incredibly exposed. It's like being naked. You're, you're, everything's being watched. So you're very exposed um, and very isolated. So no one's there for you, but you are incredibly exposed. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's like being naked in front of everybody, but everyone's just watching, but no one can come up and comfort you and talk to you or, or, or help you. It's like an extreme vulnerability, the vulnerability of a baby almost. Yeah, you can't communicate with, ed with anyone, you can't... It feels like there's just literally no way out. There's no respite, really. And the fact that my thoughts were being known and read. I mean, that was, that was a big tipping point. Mm. I can't really comprehend how, how, how Stephen manages that, how he was able to um, interrupt them or block them or, or manage thoughts. That's, uh, that's like a double think. Uh, that's, that just feels like a, a cycle of unending paranoia itself, just within your head, let alone anything happening in in the outside world. But actually, interestingly, he said how relieved he felt that it was you who was going through it this time. You know, that, that actually there was a transference of uh, the sort of tyrannical force of this control. Yeah, I don't know if that was comforting for him. I, I well, he, 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 said, he said it, that he felt relieved mm. that he was focusing on your experience. Mm. So, Marcus, this, this film is a film in two movements. One in which nothing appears to happen, but a lot is going on. And one which is very eventful. How did you feel during the beginning when you were in the chair in the room? The first bit was really me trying to understand what the narrative was. What, what, what his world entailed. Um, how he attributed meaning to things, um, how he saw his surroundings, and how he felt in his surroundings. And then I felt like once I had a picture of that, uh, 
then maybe I could start entering into that world and not understanding it, but attempting to relate to it. He gave you very clear direction, actually. He was quite tough with you. He was, he was very keen to make sure you understood the system where there were cameras on reflective surfaces, why photographs had no cameras and hidden. Did it take you a while to understand the, the system? Yeah, it's the logic, and it's quite clear. Um, it's rational. It's so strange being in this uh, supposedly irrational world, but everything has a purpose, everything, uh, has, there is a system, there is a rational system. So, um, yeah, once I understood uh, the logic to that world, I felt like, um, yeah, it, it, it made sense as a world. It, it, and that, that sort of is counterintuitive because you think, okay, when I'm going to go into this world, nothing's going to make sense. But, but everything's explained, everything's been justified, everything's been understood in that, in that perspective. Yeah, and, and one of the key ways to make sense of the world is to believe that there are no coincidences. So, so the world you were creating was a world in which everything had a purpose and a meaning. Yeah, he got quite impatient with me because um, I, I, I couldn't um, get out of the, the, the... I couldn't get into the justification of, 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 of events as, as meaningful. Everything had a meaning, everything had a purpose, and it was all against me, and it was all uh, creating a threat to me. But somehow it was only happening because you existed. I know, it's just it's the classic thing of the world's a stage. And that, that felt very hard to, to understand, but at the same time, there are periods in your life when you feel uh, lit, that, that isolated that you feel that far removed from, from everyone, that um, everyone else is in kind of cahoots. Everyone else knows that you're isolated. Everyone understands that you're, you're different or you, you don't understand or you're, you're somehow separated. It, and that really started to, <clears throat> I don't know, there's a point where I, I, I sort of cottoned on to the fact, and it, it kind of seems obvious, but. I cottoned on to the fact that the narrative that we create, the narrative, that, uh, the stories we create to explain the world, they are there to support the feelings. So it's like the threat, once I understood the threat and understood the fear of the threat, then the story makes sense. It, it, it fits and it, it explains it. It's not the story that comes first, it's the feeling that comes first. So the story comes as a way of, of understanding the feeling. Yeah, it makes sense of it. And it makes sense of every, every feeling I think he was having. Um, that um, relentless, omnipresent threat from everywhere, the unpredictability of it, the uncertainty he was occupying, the doubt, the, that, that narrative had to be ex ex an extreme, um, um, almost extreme conspiracy theory to, to make sense of that. And where there was no place of safety. I mean, the room was not safe, the high street wasn't safe, the passers-by weren't safe, there was no place of safety. Did you feel a strong sense of not being safe? It wasn't until I was actually being physically restrained and he was telling me to get out the front door. And that physicality, the impossibility of that, I mean, that just, it just felt so over the top. But then I started to realise that I'd just been underplaying everything before. I hadn't understood the severity of it. I hadn't felt the severity. Mm. And that was the moment I started to feel the, the extremeness of the situation and how, how, how threatening the outside world was. But in some ways, Stephen was trying to keep you safe by giving you very clear instructions that you can't go, you can't leave it till tomorrow. You've got to do it now. Yeah, it, it felt like I was trying to, to establish certainty all the time because there's just doubt with everything. It, it felt incredibly undermining. It's like everything that you trust is, has gone. There's, there's no one I could talk to about it. There's nothing that I could be certain about. Who, who in the street is, is working for them, who isn't? What's looking at me, what's not? Um, so just, uh, just for it to be, um, just for his narrative to be validated and for that person looking in their bag, okay, yeah, they're definitely part of that organization. That was almost a relief that, 
that there was something, there was solid ground with, with that certainty. So you were able to distinguish from the passers-by that posed a threat and the other people who were not important in the kind of narrative scheme? I felt I couldn't establish that at all. And, and that's, I kept asking him, how, how do you know? Um, so I think that must be so exhausting, being preoccupied with who's a threat and who's, who's, who's a less of a threat. Mm, yes. And negotiating that constantly. And also doubting himself, he's doubting his own uh, logic all the time, and he's doubting the world. There's, there's no safe place out in the world, there's no safe place within him. And the room is not safe. The journey to the high street, to the shop, isn't safe. It feels like the room is safer. There's a safer place. Um, so that's coming back, actually, and being in the room and having the stillness. Uh, and the certainty of those cameras, that, that, that felt predictable. And that felt, um, yeah, there's, there was a certain amount of uh, relief to that. There's a kind of irony that you, during the whole process of the couple of days we've been shooting, you have been observed and watched by cameras. You're making a film. And did that irony occur to you? Did you think about that? Was um, it helpful? <laughs> It was, um, it, it, it did a bit actually when he kept telling me to act naturally. And whenever anyone tells you to do that, it's, it's impossible to do that. And um, it, any, any stage of this, I didn't want to act actually. Mm. So for, for him to direct me to be natural and normal, it was, it was a kind of, um, for me, it was, it was a huge weight off. Because I didn't have to, I didn't have to be him necessarily. I just had to had to um, be in the circumstance of being filming, being filmed. But when he was saying act naturally, I understood that to mean act naturally, or they'll know you're not acting naturally. You'll draw attention to yourself if you don't act naturally. Yeah, the ridiculousness of that was, you know, I could barely stand up in the street, <laughs> and he was still telling me to act natural. And that sort of, that sort of misconception of, 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 of how you're perceived, um, that must be there. I mean, he must have been in the street and really struggling, but still kind of thinking that he's, he's passing off as, as ordinary. The ending where you ask about an ending is left open-ended. What were your thoughts there when Stephen told you that it didn't end. It's just an incomprehension of uh, how long this, he was in this, 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 this world. Mm. 13 years, I think he mm, said. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's 24 hours, you know, when he was in bed, in the bath, every, every aspect of his life, he was dealing with his threat. And I can't, kind, I, I can't really imagine that. So um, this idea that just goes on and on and on, I, I didn't want to just make it neat. I didn't want to, you know, to, to, to wrap it up. I wanted to get that sense that it, it, it's just going to happen and it's going to go on and on and on. I hadn't really uh, grasped the isolation. The fact that he's, you know, he said, you can't talk to your mum. <clears throat> everyone, everyone is in on this. Um, and once you start to take that seriously, and once you actually... Um, understand how, that's, how serious that is for him, you're utterly alone. There's no one you can talk to and there's nothing you can trust, yeah. not even your perception, not even your, your hearing. Ev everything is, is meaning threat. Everything has significance. There are no um, coincidences.